This program is designed to help you better understand why you may be referred to a gastroenterologist for a medical procedure, either a gastroscopy or a colonoscopy. The video is divided into three sections. Introduction to Gastroenterology, Gastroscopy, and Colonoscopy. In the first section, we'll review the basic anatomy of the gastrointestinal system. In the second section, we'll learn about a procedure called gastroscopy, which looks through your mouth into your stomach. In the third section, we'll learn about colonoscopy, which lets your doctor examine the inside of your large intestine. Gastroenterology is the area of medicine that deals with the digestive system and how your body breaks down food so that it can be absorbed by your intestines to feed the rest of your body. The digestive system is divided into two main areas. The first area includes the long, winding, muscular tube that goes from your mouth to your rectum and includes the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and the appendix. The second area includes the liver, the pancreas, the bile duct, and the gallbladder, which help the other organs digest your food. In this program, we'll focus on the hollow organs responsible for food digestion, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. At the top of the digestive tract is the esophagus. It's a kind of pipe that runs from just beyond the mouth, near the level of the vocal cords, down to the stomach, and is about 15 to 17 inches long. Just like at the top of the esophagus, there's a ring-like muscle at the bottom that acts like a valve keeping food and stomach acid from refluxing back up from the stomach into the throat. The esophagus leads into the stomach, which is a sac shaped like the letter J. This is where food is stored and where stomach juices start digesting the solid food into a liquid mixture. The small intestine is a very long tube that runs from the stomach to the large intestine. This tube is about 6 meters or 20 feet long and includes the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. It takes 3 to 4 hours for food to travel from your stomach to the end of this long tube. In the small intestine, food continues to break down into tiny pieces that will provide nutrition and energy that your body needs to function. Finally, in the large intestine or colon, which is about three to four feet long, the last of the water from the food you eat is removed and the solid waste material stays in your colon and is pushed into the rectum where it is expelled when you have a bowel movement. You have been referred to a gastroenterologist. A gastroenterologist is a doctor who specializes in the digestive system. We'll discuss some of the reasons why you might need to see a gastroenterologist. A gastroenterologist's main job is to try and look into the cause of some symptoms that may be related to the gut or the gastrointestinal tract. And that includes a number of things. It can include difficulty swallowing, it can include heartburn or regurgitation, the feeling of food or liquid coming up into the throat. Uh, it may include chest pain, stomach pains, abnormal stomach cramps, sometimes vomiting, unexplained weight loss, bleeding and changes in bowel habit as well, perhaps uh, changes or increase in diarrhea or constipation. All of these are symptoms that may trigger a gastroenterologist to look into the cause of your symptoms. Other reasons that you may be asked uh, to see a gastroenterologist, for example, would include screening or surveillance. Screening, for example, would be to look for disease because somebody else in your family may have a condition or because you have a risk factor for a condition for example, such as uh, colon polyps or stomach cancer or something like that. 
surveillance is when uh, investigations may be conducted to follow up on a condition that has been identified previously. So if you've been identified as having, for example, Barrett's esophagus, then it may be decided that it would be important for you to have further investigation to make sure the condition doesn't progress. In addition, you may be asked to see a gastroenterologist because somebody else has identified a condition or made a diagnosis, and the gastroenterologist then has the expertise or the ability to recommend a particular course of treatment or particular series of further investigations to help treat you rather more precisely. There are a number of different tests and procedures a gastroenterologist might want to do. Two of the main ones are a gastroscopy, in which the doctor looks through your mouth and into your stomach, and a colonoscopy, which looks into your large intestine. 